Hello and welcome to my assembly on thinking about VE Day, which stands for Victory in Europe Day, which we're remembering next week uh, on the 8th of May, because it's 75 years since the end of the Second World War. And in this assembly, I'm going to be thinking a little bit more about what that meant and what it, uh, what it might mean to us today. So just over 80 years ago, the Second World War began. It was a huge war that involved most nations of the world. And on the 8th of May 1945, at three o'clock, Winston Churchill, who was the UK Prime Minister at that time, announced that to the nation that the war in Europe was, was over. And you can see a picture of him in this slide. This meant that after nearly six years of war that had cost the lives of millions of people across the world and had destroyed families, homes and cities had come to an end. And millions of people rejoiced that the war was over and they were relieved from the intense strain of war. And in towns and cities across the world, people marked the victory with street parties, dancing and singing. So let's have a look at what happened in v on VE Day 75 years ago. In this slide, we can see people dancing for joy in the streets. An estimated 50,000 people took to the streets around Piccadilly Circus in London to dance and to celebrate. The joy of the day broke down normal social conventions and people spoke to and hugged people that they'd never met before. Music was provided by gramophones, accordions and barrel organs and revellers sang and danced to the popular tunes of the day. In the next picture we can see some young people celebrating by wading into the fountain of Trafalgar Square. And I guess on a special day like that, nobody really minded that they were breaking all the normal rules about what you could do in the centre of London. And here's another picture of some people giving the sign for victory that Winston Churchill had used throughout the war as a way of encouraging people when he spoke to them in towns and cities that had been badly affected by bombing and by all sorts of other things that had happened during the six years of the war. So here is a picture of Winston Churchill himself, the UK Prime Minister, waving to a huge crowd because earlier on that day he had announced on the radio that the war in Europe was finally over. You can see on the next picture that uh, King George VI and his family, including Princess Elizabeth, who's our current queen, and Princess Margaret, who was her sister, uh, came out onto the balcony, balcony of Buckingham Palace to greet everybody. Princess Elizabeth and her sister were allowed to leave the palace to celebrate with the crowds outside, although they had to do it secretly. The future queen described it as one of the most memorable nights of her life. And many people attended church services to thank God for the victory. And throughout the country, church bell ra bells rang to signal the end of the fighting. After years of wartime restrictions and dangers, including food and clothes rationing, nightly blackouts and bombing raids, people were understandably eager to let loose and finally enjoy themselves. But we can see from the next picture that not everyone felt like celebrating on VE Day. The hardship of the war years had taken their toll on many people, leaving them with little energy for rejoicing. And for many, the celebrations were seen tinged with sadness. These two girls waving flags stand on the rubble of a bombed out building. For those who'd lost loved ones in the conflict, it was a time to reflect. And before they celebrated, many people went to churches and cathedrals to spend some time in prayer and to remember relatives who had been killed in the war. And don't forget, of course, this wasn't just happening in Britain, but for people all around the world, they were feeling the same relief that the war is over. And in Germany itself, people were also relieved that the fighting had finally come to an end. After the celebrations had died down, it was time to rebuild the country. But shortages remained for several years and clothing rations lasted until 1949 and uh, other rations lasted until 1954. So even today, some people's memories of VE Day are tinged with sadness. I mentioned the King, King George VI, um, a minute ago, and you can see a picture of him here. 
In the speech that he broadcast in 1945 from a London that he called war battered but never for one moment daunted or dismayed, he asked the nation to remember to join with him in an act of, act of thanksgiving, remembering the men and women who had laid down their lives. We have come to the end of our tribulation and they are not with us at our moment of rejoicing. So let us salute in proud gratitude the great ho host of the living who have brought us to this victory. We were, he said, upheld through nearly six years of suffering by the knowledge that everyone, uh, everything was at stake, our freedom, our independence and our very existence. And Winston Churchill said later in, on the same day that we were not downhearted and had no thought of quitting the struggle. A victory, he said, in all our long history, we have never seen a greater day than this. In a more muted way, we're celebrating that victory again, joining in with the singing of songs like We'll Meet Again. But today we're being called on once again to unite and to make a different kind of sacrifice for our own self-preservation. But May the 8th gives us a chance to pause in our isolation. And remember the sacrifice of many generations and to celebrate as they did the end of a long war and the 75 years of peace in Europe that it brought us. So if you want to, as usual in our assemblies, I'm going to finish with a prayer. You can either think about uh, what VE Day meant to people uh, in uh, the time and what it's meant for the 75 years since then, or you can join in with a prayer by saying Amen at the end. Dear God, thank you for all those who fought to bring peace during the Second World War. Thank you that peace eventually came. Please be, be with all those who are living in areas of the world that are affected by wars today. And please help us to do our bit in creating peace wherever we are. Amen. I hope that you uh, have a really good weekend um, and enjoy yourselves um, as much as you can in this difficult time. Uh, we're thinking of you and we look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.